The last Home Assistant release of the year is here. December's 2024.12 has arrived, and this month we have a better scene editor, a big new voice feature, speed improvements, and a new way of grading the quality of integrations. First up though, we have a big improvement to the scene editor in Home Assistant, which adds a review mode, but also an edit mode to that scene editor. So funny thing about this new feature is that it's designed to fix a common issue when you are editing scenes in Home Assistant, and that is that when you go into a scene, it would actually activate the scene the moment you clicked into it, which let's say for example, you're just gonna go in and change the name of your scene. Suddenly all of your lights would come on as defined in that scene, which I'm guessing has caused a lot of you some panic when it's 1 a.m. and suddenly everything is lit up like Blackpool Illuminations. But what I find funny about this is that even though I've been using Home Assistant for obviously a long time and I make all of these videos and everything, I actually had no idea about this issue as I never use scenes personally myself. So this did make me chuckle when I saw it, that it was fixed in this release. Now, however, when you go into the scene editor, you will be in review mode, which lets you view the scene without actually triggering it. And most importantly, it lets you edit the name icon and area without triggering the scene, which did happen previously. If you want to actually edit the scene, then you click the live preview button, which will then at that point going to apply the scene, and then you can make the changes that you need to the scene. I think this is a really nice quality of life improvement that really enhances the user experience in a very good way. Next up, we have a really, really cool new feature that has been added to voice capabilities in Home Assistant, which is Fallback Conversation Agent. So as we know, in Home Assistant, there are really two types of conversation agents. You can either use Home Assistant's local intent handler, which is used for standard smart home commands like turn on, turn off, that type of thing, or there is also LLMs like OpenAI or Anthropic which can also do those standard commands and potentially more at the sacrifice of speed and privacy. In 2024.12, however, you can now combine these two together to get the best of both worlds. If you head over to the voice assistant settings and you change your conversation agent to an LLM like ChatGPT, a new option is going to appear for preferring local commands. If you enable this option, whenever you use a voice, what will happen is that your command will first be sent to Home Assistant's local intent handler. And then if for some reason it's unable to handle the command or you asked it a question that's outside of its capabilities, it's then gonna pass that on to your chosen LLM to handle it instead to get a response. This is a huge addition in my opinion to voice in Home Assistant because it basically allows you to have the faster and private response for simple commands, but with the capabilities of search and continuous conversation capabilities of an LLM. So it brings us a lot closer to the capabilities of say a Google Home or an Amazon, for example, at least until such time that we can have our own private LLM running on a potato in our houses, of course. Another new improvement to voice in this release is there is a big improvement to speed in certain languages under certain circumstances. The team has been working hard on the way that sentences are matched, which has drastically sped up the experience where Home Assistant noted that a wrong sentence in some languages could have taken up to a full 15 seconds to process in some cases, which is obviously way too long. So if you were affected by this issue, I'm sure that it's gonna make a huge difference to those of you and more speed is always more welcome for the rest of us. Finally, for the big stuff, this isn't so much of a feature, but I do think that it is worth mentioning because it does have important benefits for us as users. And that is that there is a new way of defining integrations on the quality scale. Now, you may or may not know this, but if you head over to the documentation and you just look up an integration, in the corner, you will see that the integration likely has a score on the quality scale from silver, gold, and platinum, or even no score. 
And these are basically a grading that defines how good an experience an integration will provide. In 2024.12, these requirements and levels have been totally redefined to include more criteria. Now, I'm not going to read each criteria out, but the reason that I think this is good for us as users is that it puts a lot more emphasis on providing better documentation for integrations, which is always good for us, but also I think that it encourages and it also assists developers to make integrations even better with a clear set of rules to follow, which again, is always gonna benefit us as users in the long run. Hello viewers, it is I now coming to you from the floor. I forgot to tell you that this month is actually month of what the hack, where basically Home Assistant is dropping the strict requirements that you need to log a feature or a bug or whatever on GitHub. And they're basically for the entire month of December, allowing you to go over to the Home Assistant forum and log your feature requests or your bugs over there. And basically anyone can do that. And you can upvote uh, your favorite feature if somebody else has requested it. And the team is gonna be looking at these and trying to get some of them done at least. Not everything will get done, but your feedback will certainly be taken on board. So if you want to participate in month of what the hack and get your features and suggestions, potentially into Home Assistant, head over to the link down in the description and you can just do that on the Home Assistant form. As for the list of things this month, the real link integration gets a bunch of new sensors and controls added in this release. Units of measurements can now be translated into your local language in the front end. The Python version in Home Assistant has been updated to bring more speed. There are several new units of measurements for power and flow rate and camera images now have a download snapshot button to save images down to your machine. As for new integrations, we have five new integrations this month, including Music Assistant making its way from Hacks as a community integration over into an officially supported integration this month after it was delayed last month, which is of course great news. And as for breaking changes or backwards incompatibility changes, it's a pretty small list this month with very minor changes and nothing major standing out, which we of course love to see. Though do be sure and make sure to have a look for yourself to make sure nothing applies to you, sure. And that's about it for this release, a nice way of rounding out the year of Home Assistant updates. Really, really looking forward to seeing the new fallback option in use within voice and seeing how that kind of expands its voice capabilities, which I think it actually does really dramatically. I'd love to hear your favorite new features from this release down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. And we will of course have a brand new set of Home Assistant updates, which will be starting in 2025. God damn, this year has gone so fast. <laughs> Can't believe it's the end of the year already. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you. Bye.